What does it mean to be number one? Some would say you have to be born with the natural talent to ascend to the top. Others say you need to give your entire being, working hard day in and day out, constantly improving. But what happens when a person is born with natural talent plus a strong work ethic? It leads to an unsatiable desire to be number one. That desire fuels the work ethic, which leads to training the body into being the best it can possibly be, which then bolsters your natural talent, sharpening your particular skill set to a point like that of a head of a spear, pushing you to excel in the sole pursuit of your objective. And in this case, that objective is being the best striker in the world. You see, if natural talent beats ordinary players and hard work beats natural talent, then imagine a player with both the natural talent and the insane work ethic. A player like that would not only have the world at their feet, but every other player would be forced to kneel and acknowledge them as king. Hello everyone, my name is Price and welcome to the channel. This is my first time making a video on Blue Lock, so if you like it, hit the thumbs up button. And without further ado, let's talk about the king, Bauru. Even as a child, Bauru revealed himself as king and the uh, football pitch as his kingdom. Anyone on Bauru's team was nothing but pawns or bit players to ensure that he scores goals and win matches. And that was widely accepted by his teammates. Until he found himself at Blue Lock and his first clash with players that rivaled and even surpassed him. Bauru's mindset is that of a play or a TV show in which he himself is the main protagonist and everyone else on his team is, like I said before, mid players, and which it's kind of understandable. He's always been number one. His youth teams were built around him, but not in Blue Lock. Baro's first taste of despair came at the hands of Saga, who would get the better of him during a match. And at that point, Baro's worldview was shattered. If he was no longer the main protagonist, then he would become the villain and steal back the title, which he would have limited success, but ultimately fails. And through his failure, it teaches him a lesson, not only in humility, which the villainous king would definitely need moving forward, but it also helped mature him and he actually starts to adapt and think more about his playstyle. And he even admits defeat to Asagi, which is a first for him. Fast forwarding a bit to the current day in the manga, we're in the Neo Egoist League or NEL for short. Battle plays for the Italian football team called Ubers, a team meant to represent Serie A giant Juventus. Ubers are a team that specializes in defense which prioritize its players' individual strengths to achieve its victory. Ubers currently are coached by the second best striker in the world, Mark Snuffy, a player that has won league titles in four out of the five top leagues. Now, power up joining Ubers makes sense on paper. A team that prioritizes defense and leaves the attacking to one player in particular, I mean, what's not the love for him? And there we would see Bauro at his peak, upgrading his arsenal of goal scoring abilities, such as his lightning dribble, chop feint, charging speed, his predator eye, and even his insane shooting capability, being able to score a goal from 30 meters out. With this arsenal, Bauro is quickly becoming someone who can lay claim as the future number one striker in the world. But that future is only a possibility if he can find a system that not only brings out the best in him, but his teammates as well. Baruto has shown the ability to be selfless at times, but it's not his preferred method of winning. He's a true number nine, a player who solely focuses on scoring. He's the tip of the spear that pierces the defense and wins the matches, which means Baro needs a team that allows a single goal threat, but has multiple creative midfielders who can set up goal scoring opportunities. Plus a defensive back line that can double as great defenders, but also great decision makers, knowing when to make a risky pass from back to front to give Balrog a quick fast break charge straight to the opposition's goal. His Ubers team is a great precursor to a team I think could help Balrog become number one, but currently the team lacks a creative, adaptive midfielder who can link the defensive line and the offensive attack. A selfless player a player that prides themselves on creating chances for their teammates. 
a player like Rayo. Putting Rayo on a team with Balrog just makes sense. Putting Rayo on a team with just about anybody makes sense. <laughs> That's how much of a great player Rayo is. Um, his ability to copy skills and abilities from other players would ensure that the team always have an ace up their sleeve. Also pair that with his meta vision and Rayo would be fundamental to Uber's success. And at the same time, making Uber's an insanely difficult team to play against. Now, I know at presently constructed, the Ubers team are a great team, but they do have some major drawbacks. And one of them is their over-reliance on Baru to score goals, even when multiple players have goal scoring abilities to offer. This strategy acts as a double-edged sword that prevents any of the other players from assisting the team as backup scoring options, and thus making the team's attack kind of predictable. And at the same time, the system limits the team's potential to succeed. Think about it, what if Baru is ever unable to make an impact on the game, either being man-marked or just being phased out of the game by the opposing team? Well, if Rayo was playing with Ubers and acting as the team's conductor, being the vocal point of the team's possession, finding ways to get Baru the ball in scoring opportunities and being able to copy Baru's shooting ability and snatching a goal when Baru is man-marked and unable to receive a pass, that greatly alleviates the, the reliance on Baru. Plus, as stated earlier, Rayo has MetaVision, and adding another midfielder with MetaVision to Ubers would just be a great thing for everyone. Um, using his MetaVision, he can predict the opposition's attack pattern, then intercept the pass and win back possession for the team, which then can lead to a counterattack. Rayo and Baru could be a star pairing similar to Kevin De Bruyne and Erling Haaland for Manchester City. Just by adding Ryu, he could turn an already good Ubers team to an elite team that would have surely finished better than third in the NEL. But this partnership wouldn't just be beneficial for Baru. Rayo would finally get a consistent partner capable of giving his all in every game and who can actually elevate the team just by his drive and passion alone. Baru has shown to be capable of doing uh, when Ubers played Bastard Munchen. I mean, both players at this point in time still need to improve. Um, they have so much that they need to grow, especially for Rayo. I think his over-reliance on Nagi is coming to an end, and I can see no better partner to pair him with than Baru. I believe Ryu in the future will be a player who can captain a team and thrive with the responsibility of orchestrating an entire offense. A player that would be a great ally to any king. And yeah, that's all I have for you today, folks. Um, what do you think? Do you believe that the Tyrant King can become number one? Or is there just simply too much competition for the crown? Also, do you agree with me that Rayo would be a good fit on a team with Baro? Let me know. Let your voice be heard in the comments below. And of course, thanks for watching. Take care.